contributions to tonight's homework, not just the odds, which you would find in the back of your book. UCLA college football game or anything? <coughs> no. Did you watch it all the way through? Yeah. Oh my god. It was amazing. I just I, I taped it and, and I knew they were gonna lose, but I just wanted to see if they could generate any offense at all. And then I just kept watching and watching it. It was, it was insane. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty fun. Even though I hate football. <laughs> what would you like better? What's that? Would you like to watch any other sport better or? Than what? In football? Yeah, I, I, wa I like watching every sport better than football. I'd rather watch curling. I'd rather watch <laughs> water polo. I'd rather watch lacrosse. I'd rather watch darts. I'd rather watch billiards. I'd rather watch poker. There's no sport I wouldn't rather watch than football. But that was a really exciting game, nonetheless. Wait, did you see the, did you see the Dodgers Padre game? The first one, not the second one? No, no. Is that the one where the guy hit four homers? Which one? Oh, that was Arizona. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the one where the dude hit the walk-off homer? Yeah, and to win, to win those. Of course, Yeah, because <laughs> they were playing. The, the Dodgers were playing their Triple A and Double A team. Oh, really? Team oh, I for the first one, but then the second one, I don't think they were, and they lost seven two. They put Turner in on the in the first game. They put Turner in for one up to bat, and he, he hit a home run, and he got two runs. I was like, oh, that's crazy. That's cool. That's that's cool. cool. That guy Turner. Right? That's cool. It's like, I'm glad you follow the Dodgers. I don't. I get Direct TV, so I don't get to watch them on TV. Oh, no, I was there. Oh, you were. Oh, you were. Oh, well, yeah. that makes all the difference in the world. Well, yeah. See, a baseball game. I love going to live baseball games. I know they're boring, but I don't care. I think they're really fun. It's fun to hang out with your friends and family. Exactly, and you get food and you, I mean, you wander around. You could do that. You could do that. You could try to get a foul ball. Yeah, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Yeah. They hit so many fouls. Okay. We are going to learn about the chain rule. Probably. Believe it or not, probably the most important thing you will ever learn pertaining to derivatives. It is the chain rule that allows you to take the derivatives of weird and horrible functions. The chain rule is the end all and be all of taking derivatives. I love the chain rule. And the chain rule loves me too. So here we go. I, I need the chain rule to make sense to you guys. And so I'm going to, uh, 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 what do you call, it? approach the chain rule in two ways. Today I'm going to pr approach it completely algebraically, excuse me, where I'm going to introduce the chain rule and we're going to do a bunch of problems and see that algebraically the chain rule works. And then tomorrow I'm going to try to convince you of the veracity of the chain rule through real life situations like a guy driving a car or watering grass. And I want you to see that even in day to day real life situations, it's all chain rule. The chain rule actually happens. But, but today we're going to go completely algebraically. Okay? So here's the chain rule. And you can see it right on top there dy over dx equals dy over du times du over dx. When you look at the right side of that equation, what is it about the right side of the equation that makes you think, well, yeah, that could be true? Yes, Abigail? Absolutely, the du's cancel. The du's cancel. And that's it. That, that's actually what happens. Those du's have actual meaning, and they do actually cancel. So sure, the rate of change of y with respect to x equals the rate of change of y with respect to u <coughs> times the rate of change of u with respect to x. So that's good. We're going to approach this by doing compositions of functions. Look at the first example. Do you see that y equals 2 times the quantity 3x minus 5 is just the composition of y equals 2u and u equals 3x minus 5? Do you guys remember doing compositions of functions? Yeah. Like if, if I had f of x equals x squared and I had g of x equaling x minus 1, 
then f of g of x would end up being f of x minus 1, which ends up being x minus 1 squared. Does yeah. that ring a bell to you guys? The composition of functions, where you're not plugging a number in for x, but you're actually plugging in an expression every time you see an x? That's a composition of function. And this, in my opinion, this is the good way to write composition of functions. There's also a dumb way to write composition of function, which is like this, f and then a little circle, and then g. Fog. And so it looks like fog. But, but I, to me, this is not as, as obvious as using functional notations. So you're going to see me tending to prefer this over this. Um, but anyway. So if you believe that y equals 2 times 3x minus 5 is the composite of y equal 2u and u equal 3x minus 5, that is y of u of x, which would mean y of 3x minus 5, which is 2 times 3x minus 5, what is the relationship between the derivatives? Well, look at the next line. dy dx is 6, dy du is 2, and du dx is 3. Do you see that dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx? That is 6 is equal to 2 times 3. Do you believe? Thank you, Daniel. Okay, then look at the next one. y equals 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared is the composite of y equals u squared and u equals 3x squared plus 1. That is, well, you know, it's the composite. You stick a 3x squared plus 1 in for u and you get y equals 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Well, let's go ahead and get the derivatives of the total y and then the two things that, that, that make up that composite. dy dx is 36x to the third plus 12x. dy du is 2u. That is, I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to u. So I'm treating the u as if it was the x. Are you guys OK with that, that if y equals u squared, then dy du is going to be just 2u? I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to u, so I'm like treating the u as if it were an x. You know, like if I had y equals x squared, then the derivative of y with respect to x would be 2x. That, that's all I'm doing here, just treating the u as if it were an x. And then du dx is 6x, and then you multiply them out, and it turns out that 2 times the quantity 3x squared plus 1 times 6x ends up being 36x to the third plus 12x. dy dx equals dy du times du dx, again. So that's our chain rule, okay? So now, it's weird. I'm introducing the chain rule with all these composite functions, but I'm not gonna need you to turn every problem into that. I'm gonna have you do it a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently, but I just want you to see that uh, the, the I really appreciate you all. I was just thinking about that the other day. Um, so anyway, yeah, you're not going to be doing that composite stuff. I'm just using it to convince you that it's true. Okay. So uh, hey, let's let's do some examples. Here, let's look at example number one. All righty. I've got y equals the cosine of x squared. Do you see that this is a composite of y equals cosine u? and u equals x squared. And so what I'm going to do is get the derivative of this guy with respect to u. That is, I'm going to treat this x squared as if it was just a big U. A way to say this in English would be to say y equals the cosine of whatever. <coughs> And if someone asks me, hey, Mr. Shana, what's the derivative of y equals the cosine of whatever? Uh, my answer is going to be, hey, the derivative of the cosine of whatever is the negative sine of whatever, right? And I don't care what the whatever is, right? D, dy dx equals dy du. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to the whatever. So the derivative of the cosine of whatever is the negative sine of whatever, except I then have to take the derivative of the whatever with respect to x. So I've got y equals the cosine of x squared, you know, whatever. The derivative of the cosine of whatever is the negative sine of whatever times the derivative of the whatever, which is 2x. So you end up with y prime equals negative sine of x squared times 2x. You see that? 
I'm essentially saying, you know, the derivative of the cosine of whatever is the negative sine of whatever times the derivative of the whatever. And that's the way you're going to start thinking about this. Here, let me give you another one. Example number two, y equals the sine of a bunch of stuff. Okay, y equals the sine of a bunch of stuff. What's the derivative of the sine of a bunch of stuff? Cosine of, cosine cosine of a bunch of stuff, right? It doesn't matter what it is. The derivative of the sine of whatever is the cosine of whatever. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the cosine of a bunch of stuff, except what am I then going to have to, oh, my little x is shrunk in there. But then what am I going to have to multiply by? The derivative of all the stuff. Yeah, the derivative of that stuff. I've got to multiply by du dx. I've got to multiply by the derivative of that stuff. You guys okay with that? So that's, hey, that's the chain rule. That's the chain rule in, in a nutshell. So can I give you guys another example to do now on your own? Yes. Okay, here it comes. Example number three. What if I gave you y equals the tangent of the sine of x? Go ahead and get me the derivative of that now. I do want to remind you that the, uh, the derivative of the tangent of x is equal to the secant squared of x. I just want to remind you of that. We learned it yesterday. So what's the derivative of the tangent of whatever? Right on. Except that you have to multiply the derivative of that. That whatever. You guys ready? Okay. Hey, the derivative of the tangent of the sine of x is going to be the secant squared of the sine of x. I, I don't care what this is, right? The derivative of the tangent of whatever is the secant squared of whatever, except for one thing. What am I going to have to multiply by? Cosine. Right, I've got to multiply by the derivative of the sine of x. I need that guy right there. You guys okay with this process? Yes? Does it simplifies down to the secant sine of x, right? Which then would, could be written as tangent. So, so you're saying this is the secant squared of sine of x. The cosine oh. of x can't cancel no, because it's, you're taking the secant no. of the sine of x. Yeah. So, yeah. All righty. Uh, here. Can I, uh, another version of the chain rule. Another version of the chain rule is to use a, a composite function f of g of x. And so I, I want you to see another common way of writing the chain rule is this, is if y equals f of g of x, then y prime is going to be f prime of g of x, right? That is, you just take the derivative. I've got the, I've got the tangent of whatever. The derivative is going to be the derivative of the tangent of whatever, which is the secant squared of whatever. So I'm going to have f prime of g of x, except then I have to multiply by the derivative of that guy. So Another version using functional notation is to say, oops, y prime would be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Again, you're taking the derivative of this guy, treating this g of x as if it was just an x, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of that g of x. Here, let, let me give you something that kind of looks like this. Example three. Example three, I've got y equal 
this thing raised to the third power. Okay? Oh, that's a 5x. And I want to take the derivative of that. Well, this is a composite. This is a composite where one, one part of it, f of x, if you will, is u to the third power, and the g of x is x squared plus 5x. That is, this is equal to f of g of x, where f of x equals x to the third power, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 5x. You see? So it's f of g of x. And I just want you to see that when we apply the power rule, we treat this guy as if it was just one big x. We just say, I don't care what's in the parentheses, the derivative of anything to the third power <coughs> is going to be 3 times that thing squared. Right? So the derivative of blah, blah, blah to the third power is going to be blah, blah, blah to the, rather, I'm sorry, 3 times blah, blah, blah to the second power. That's the power rule. The derivative of anything to the third power is 3 times that thing squared, except for one thing. You're, you're going to have to multiply by the derivative of what was inside the parentheses. So you got 2x plus 5. There's a name for what I'm applying here. It's called the general power rule. The general power rule says, I don't care what you have raised to a power. You could have smiley face raised to a power for all I care. The derivative of smiley face raised to the power is going to be n times smiley face to the n minus 1, except then you must multiply by the derivative of the smiley face whatever that smiley face happens to be, you've got to multiply by the derivative of it. And that's the application of the chain rule. Can I give you guys one to do on your own? Sure. Okay. What if I gave you this? Example number four. What if I had y equals the sine to the third power of x? Could you get me the derivative of that? And I'll give you a hint. Whenever someone presents me with a trigonometric function like sine to the third or tangent to the fourth or whatever, I always like to either write it down or in my oops, or in my head, I actually think of it like that. I go, hey, this is just this guy. This is just that guy. You know? It's whatever to the third power. Hey, the derivative of whatever to the third power is three times whatever to the second power. Except then you've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Let's see. Good luck. Time's up. Some, someone tell me, or how about if I say that, how many people got 3 times the sine squared of x, that's the derivative of whatever to the third is 3 times that thing squared, times the cosine of x? How many people got that answer? Okay, yay for you guys. Good. Great. Hey, let's do another one. Example number five. What if y equals the cosine to the fourth power of x squared. Could you get me the derivative of that? <laughs> and again, when someone presents a trigonometric function to a power, I urge you to either in your head or actually on the paper write it like that. Think of it as it's this thing to the fourth power. Good luck.
All right, hey, let's take a look at it. Y prime equals whatever to the fourth power. Hey, that's not hard. It's just going to be four times that thing to the third power. Yay, except for one thing. I now have to take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. What's the derivative of cosine x squared? Negative sine. Negative sine. Beautiful. Negative sine x, oops. Negative sine x squared. Except for one thing. Do I have to multiply by one more term? What? X. Say again? X squared. No, not x squared. It's got to be the derivative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two x. Yeah. How many people? How many people got this right? Okay, it's, it's a few of you. So do you see why? If I'm going to take the derivative of cosine of x squared, well, the derivative of the cosine of anything is the negative sine of that thing. But then I have to take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. You see. So you got to keep going. Sometimes you end up having to take derivative after derivative after derivative. Here, let's do another one. Uh, how about y equals, uh, let's so tangent, tangent to the fifth power of the sine to the third power of 5x squared plus 7x. Good luck. Give me the derivative of that. If anyone gets that right, I'll be very impressed. you to write it like this, by all means do so. Tension to the fifth power of whatever is could be rewritten like that. And then you can apply the general power rule, which is just a special case of the chain. How many people are done with this problem? How many people need more time? Okay, I'll give you another minute. Yeah, it's boring for the observer, but it's better if we don't pause it, you know. I mean, I wish the camera had a pause, but it doesn't. It only either off or on, you know. And then trying to edit them together was a real hassle. You know? Give them time to practice on their own. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, but, you know, usually kids with just the mouse go, you know, like what I do when I watch stuff on TV. Okay, hey, let's take a look at this. Y prime. The derivative of anything to the fifth power is five times that thing. To the fourth power. So are you guys okay with that so far? 
The derivative of whatever to the fifth is five times that thing to the fourth. Now I must take the derivative of what's inside here. And the derivative of the tangent of whatever is the secant squared of whatever. So I got the secant squared of the sine to the third power of 5x squared plus 7x. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. I had to take the derivative of what's inside here, and the derivative of the tangent of whatever is the secant squared of whatever. Except now I must take the derivative of the whatever. And the derivative of sine to the third power of blah, blah, blah. Well, sine to the third power of 5x squared plus 7x, are you okay that that's the same as the sine of 5x squared plus 7x to the third power, right? Mm -hmm. So the derivative of that is going to be 3 times the sine of 5x squared plus 7x squared. So this is going to be times 3 times the sine squared of 5x squared plus 7x, right? Except now I have to take the derivative of the sine of 5x squared plus 7x, which, you know, I guess I'll put a little multiplication symbol here. The derivative of the sine of 5x squared plus 7x is the cosine of 5x squared plus 7x. Because the derivative of the sine of anything is the cosine of that thing, except now I must multiply by the derivative of that thing, which gets me 10x plus 7. So there's your answer. How many people got that totally right? <laughs> Good for you guys. Any question or problem on this? By the way, I should tell the audience, like four people raised their hands. Um, so do you see where you went wrong? Do you see what you, what you left out? Yeah. So you're going to have to be thinking in these terms. And, and i got to say again, sometimes writing it out more completely will, will keep you from making an error. But I urge you, check all your answers. Check them all. Make sure you get every single one of them totally right. And uh, now if you're going to ask me, do you need to simplify this? Oh, goodness, no. No, I, I don't think even the book doesn't simplify it. You know? Just whatever you've got is what you've got. But check your answers. Make sure you got them right. Any questions or problems on it? chain rule and general power rule? Which general power rule just says, the, this here is the general power rule, by the way. I should probably put that here. This, this here is the general power rule. It says, I don't care what you're taking to a power, you can apply the power rule. All right, hey, good luck, you guys. Bye.